Well, welcome back. In this video, I start making up the uh, header pipes and the exhaust system for this XJ650. So you can see here, I made like a flange. This is one I made out of a bit of pipe. You can just see on the left there. And I had a go just hoping I could do it with pipe. But as you can see, uh, it's too thin on the end and it would mean I need to weld the exhaust tube together and then smooth that out because that's actually the gasket face. So rather than that, what I thought is I really want to do it properly so I've bought myself a bit of 50 mil solid 304 stainless bar and I'll put this in the lathe and I just do this again and it's the same design as what uh, you just saw but the other diff the only difference will be the ID the internal diameter will be smaller so I end up with an appropriate face uh, on the end for the gasket to seal on so I put it in the lathe it's a fair bit of work with stainless because it's a bit harder to machine than mold steel and it's just time consuming that's all so this outer face here i measure up and obviously i need to make this slightly smaller than the exhaust port size and then i run a chamfer on it to make it look tidy part it off and the bore i do um, the inside diameter of the exhaust tube on one end on the engine side and the other side i expand the bore out so that the exhaust tube uh, fits in about 10 mil and then i weld it on um, so these have come up really good very happy with this and what you'll see is when they go on the flange the larger diameter is what presses up against the flange and what i like about this is that when you tighten the flange up all of the stresses or weight goes against this flange not the exhaust pipe so this would be the hottest bit of the exhaust system where it's most prone to crack and I'm hoping this design is going to give me the longevity uh, that I want out of this and I you know because if you don't do stainless right there is a much higher probability that it's going to start cracking over time so here's what it looks like uh, on the actual exhaust flange so the two flanges together if you like and you can see it fits into the recess I think it's going to work perfectly so next thing I do is I bolt these onto the engine. Uh, it's good that the old gasket is in there. It's already compressed, so I just nip these up, and I know that's the spot it's going to end up in. And once these are in, I uh, am then in a position to be able to just slip the 90-degree bends in. So here they are. Super happy with that. I think, I think the, the external flanges too look awesome. So you can see in there, so it'll be a smooth finish. I, the tube goes in, it tapers down a little bit and will match the port pretty close. Here's all the bends I, I bought. So I was able to get 90 degree bends polished and 60 degree. The tube I couldn't find polished inch and a half. And there's a merge collector that I'm not that impressed with. I'll, I'll do a bit of rework on it. And that'll all go into a two inch pipe and then out to the muffler. So just putting the inch and a half tubes in. Uh, you may be wondering as well, why would I want to do this? Because it's going to affect the performance of the engine. But remembering, I'm going to uh, do a few mods on this. So without knowing the mods uh, yet fully, I do know that it's going to be much more performance than what this is now. And I want that to flow much freer. So there's the four pipes on. starting to look like, a, like an exhaust system now. So the other benefit of having a lathe is I can put the inch and a half uh, tube in and I can face it off and then I can be assured that uh, the weld joints just match up perfectly so this lathe is uh, getting a bit of a workout lately and I'm, I'm beginning to wonder how I survived without it for all these years so part these off cut them exactly as I want and the other thing with this is you know when you've got equipment like this I can make all the pipes exactly the same and when you weld them all together everything just lines up beautifully so just Debear it there, sit it on the bike, try to get the profile right, and I match all four tubes. So from the side view, they're all aligned. And what I'm trying to do here is just join them up um, so they go into that merge collector. So in the welding process, the first thing I do is line them up, just very small tacks. So I do four tacks, uh, all at 90 degrees to each other, just to make sure it's held into position. And I do this on all the tubes and then I also tack the tube to that flange I made just to make sure it's basically in the right spot. And then 
uh, once they're all tacked and I'm satisfied they're in the right spot, the next step is actually fully welding these. Now when you weld stainless, it is a bit different to mold steel. Um, if you don't do this properly, you end up with what's called sugaring on the internal walls, which uh, you don't want, can create stress uh, spots. So to get rid of that problem, what you need to do is purge the inside of the tube when you weld it. So here they are, all mounted and tacked. Um, I'm really happy with the way this is looking. So uh, they're all lined up. And you can see I've started to do a bit of work on this first uh, merge collector. It fits much better. So one of the things worth noting too is if you're working with stainless steel, you want to keep it stainless steel. So what I mean by that is flapper wheels, grinding discs, all that sort of thing is you only want to use on stainless. If you use a flapper wheel or grinding disc on mild steel and then on stainless, all you'll do is contaminate it and it will start rusting. So there's the merge collector, fits so much better like that. Don't know why they didn't make that in the first place like that. But anyway, give it a bit of a polish and once I fully weld these front tubes, I will weld that into position and then I'll be ready to put the two inch out to the rear. So here's my welding setup. I've got a dual um, flow meter setup. So one flow meter I use for TIG, the torch itself and one is for purging. Here's my welder, it's quite an advanced welder, but I set it on about 53 amps, and you can see uh, using a 12 cup and the way I grind uh, the tungsten tip, and it seems to work pretty good. The other thing is the filler wire I'm using is 308L, and the stainless is 304. Another thing that's quite important with stainless, it needs to be clean, so uh, wire brushing and all that is great, don't contaminate it as I said and then what I do is for jobs like this I use a bit of acetone just to make sure the filler wire is clean and I just wipe down the pipes and that too. Uh, here's the purge line. So the purge line is at a, a bit lower flow rate than the actual torch and what that does is just passes argon on the inside of the tube. So uh, you could buy expensive blanks but this is what I do, a bit of uh, aluminium foil make your own blank, tape it on. And the other important thing is you don't want to have this completely blank. So what I do is I tape it on. Once it's sealed, I stick a couple of little holes in there and that just allows a continual flow of argon. Uh, so, yeah, it's very important to purge and you want that constant flow. So it needs to be able to escape and you only want small holes. So I put a couple of little holes, as you can see, uh, what that does is when you weld, um, because the gas is on the inside as well, it basically looks like a weld has been uh, completed on the inside just like it would be on the outside. So here I'm just going around the flange, um, taking my time, doing little sections at a time so I don't get it too hot. And I've got the post flow for about eight seconds. So that's when you finish welding. You'll notice I keep the torch in the same spot because the argon is still flowing just to make sure that it doesn't oxidize while it's still really hot. So at this point I've got all the four flanges welded and I want to start welding this tube up. So I set the purge up again, uh, let the purge run for 30 seconds or so and then I progressively um, just weld around the tube. So I do it in short, short sections, so probably, uh, I don't know, an eighth or uh, quarter of a turn, not even a quarter of a turn each time um, because I don't want it to get too hot. So I just pick up where I've stopped each weld. A few times around I'll get all the way around the tube and I've got the amperage right so they can get a full penetration weld uh, to make sure that I don't have any issues. So I weld them all up on, on all four uh, tubes and then uh, once they're done I put them on the buff just to uh, shine them up. So here's one of them here. It's actually turned out as good as uh, I, I'd hoped for. Um, there were no problems with the weld. So I just put it on the buff, start with the coarser polish first. Uh, the elbows were already polished, but that middle section was semi polished. So I just did it, you know, a few minutes on there with the coarse uh, pad, changed it over, 
and did it with a soft wheel and got it to all match uh, with that sort of nice finish. So I'm suspecting that when I get this engine built and finally running that I'll get some nice colour out of the tops of those pipes where it's the hottest. So it's all turned out really well. Uh, I'll just mount them on the bike so you can have a look. This is the top section done. I'm waiting on the mufflers uh, that I've ordered, so that will be all I can do this video. Um, if you do like this video, please don't forget to subscribe as it really does help me continue to create videos for you guys and girls. Um, I'd appreciate it. Please subscribe and share. And the next video will be completing this exhaust system. Stay tuned.